Hey there, Joy Seeker. Welcome back for more Gen Juice. I'm Jen Zingmark, your LDS life and divorce coach, here to help you navigate the challenges of divorce with faith, grace, and resilience. Today, I'm diving into a topic that hits home for so many of us. We all know divorce is one of the most challenging experiences life can throw at you, and it's easy to feel overwhelmed, lost, and even trapped in it at times. But what if I told you that sometimes the reason we stay stuck isn't just because of our circumstances, but because of the damaging lies that we tell ourselves? I want to unpack some of the lies that keep us from healing and moving forward after divorce. By the end of this video, you'll be able to recognize these lies and replace them with truths that will set you free. Thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel to get all of my latest videos. Let's talk about the lies that many of us believe are true in divorce because they cause us pain and keep us stuck. And they seem like thoughts and we think they make sense, but underneath, when we expose the consequences of holding on to these lies, we can see the harm that they do to us emotionally. I'm going to explore three of the common lies that we believe that keep us stuck in divorce, and you will learn how to identify them and why they can be so tricky. The first lie that comes up most often with my clients is, I will never be happy again. After divorce, it is common to feel like you'll never experience joy or peace or happiness or fulfillment ever again. The life you once imagined with your spouse is gone, and it can seem impossible to create a new one that will bring you the same amount of joy and happiness. But here's the truth, friend. Happiness is still possible, and it is within your control. Divorce is a life-changing event, no doubt, but it doesn't mean the end of your joy or happiness. Your happiness isn't tied to your marriage or your past. It is tied to how you choose to approach your divorce journey and how you choose to move forward in your future. I know it feels daunting. I know it feels like the rug has been pulled out from under you. I know I have been there. I know how terrible it feels when you're dealing with divorce or even serious problems in your marriage like infidelity or addiction issues or trying to rebuild your life after divorce. It can feel hopeless and overwhelming and like you're all alone, like your life will never be rich and full of joy and happiness again. I understand. I know how that feels. I have been there. I know exactly how hard it is. And that's why I've got you, friend. This is why I'm here. Remember that you have power to create a new narrative. You get to decide how you view the story of your past and your situation now and how you create the life you want going forward. You can choose a narrative where joy still exists and you can define what happiness looks like in your next chapter. You actually get to choose the narrative that you tell yourself and everyone else about your divorce journey. And something you need to know is there are events that happen in your life. And then there is the narrative that you choose to think and say about those events. And you get to decide what you want to believe about the events and circumstances in your life. And your mindset determines the lens by which you interpret everything that happens in your life. So accept divorce as just an event in your life. It does not define you, but offers you an opportunity to learn and grow. Your value and your worth do not change based on the circumstances in your life. So don't believe the lie 
that you will never be happy again. It is not true. You definitely will be happy again if you choose to be. The next lie that keeps so many of us stuck is the belief that I am not enough. This thought is actually a core fear that we all have. We all struggle with the fear that we are not enough at times in our lives. And it can show up in a lot of different versions as thoughts that you think, such as you don't know what you're doing, or you're just an imposter, or you shouldn't have said that, or you'll never be able to achieve that, or you're not as good as the other person, or what is the matter with you? It's all your fault. It's just the way our brains are designed, and this belief can be a big problem. When a marriage ends, and then you have thoughts that if you were just a little better, a little smarter, a little more attractive, a little bit more attentive, then your marriage wouldn't have fallen apart. You internalize this idea that you weren't enough to keep the relationship together, and it can become a heavy weight that you carry around. But the truth is you are enough. The end of your marriage does not define your worth. People change and circumstances change and sometimes relationships end, but that doesn't mean you failed. It means that that relationship is complete. It is not the truth that you are not enough. It is not reality. We are all already enough. We are whole and complete and worthy exactly the way that we are. I really believe that it's part of our work here on earth as human beings to better understand our own worthiness and learn to view ourselves as whole and complete, worthy of love and respect and happiness exactly the way you are. So the more that you internalize this truth, the easier it becomes to release the shame and guilt that's holding you back. Ask yourself, what do I gain from holding on to the lie that I am not enough and let it go? Start embracing the truth that you are valuable and worthy and whole and complete and lovable exactly the way that you are, because that is the truth. The third damaging lie is I have to do it all on my own. This lie is sneaky because it can come across as empowering at first. You might even tell yourself, I don't need anyone else. I'm strong. I can do this on my own. I can handle this. I can handle everything. And yes, you are strong, but strength doesn't mean going through divorce alone. The truth is we all need support and divorce can be incredibly isolating. And if you believe that you have to carry the entire burden of your divorce journey on your own, you're only going to make it that much harder. The most vital support that you need right now is from God. So turn to him. Whether you have been close to the Lord in your past or not, he is waiting for you with open arms to turn to him. With God, all things are possible, even creating something beautiful from the broken pieces of your life after divorce. I know this is true. I have seen this in my own life and with the lives of many, many of my clients. He can take the broken pieces of your life and turn it into a beautiful story of growth, faith, and triumph if you partner with him in your divorce journey. You also need help from others. I like to say, find your tribe or recruit your crew. You need support. You have just lost your spouse, the person closest to you in the whole world. It's important that you connect with other people. So enlist the help of friends and family and coworkers and neighbors. And this is the place where I meet most of my clients, a life coach. This is the perfect time to connect with someone who can help you see a better future for yourself and your life than you actually recognize right now. 
You are choosing where you want to take your life. And even though you may not know exactly how things are going to work out or where you want to go, you know that you are moving forward from this divorce. You are embracing your new life and creating a new path. This is the perfect time to connect with and find a mentor, a counselor, or a therapist, and a coach possibly even all three, depending on your situation. Use this transition time to make lasting changes in your life. We can always improve, and it is important to learn everything that you can from your marriage so that you avoid repeating the same mistakes that you made in your past relationships. So get support from others, lean on friends, family members, co-workers, neighbors, ward members, but definitely find a mentor who has been on the path that you are on. Find someone that can help you process all of the emotions that you're going through and heal from the pain and trauma that you have experienced going through divorce. It is so important to have a guide to help you through this journey. Don't let pride or fear of being vulnerable stop you from getting help. There is no shame in needing others during this time. In fact, allowing yourself to be supported is an act of strength and courage. So ask yourself, who can I lean on right now? And don't be afraid to reach out and get the help that you deserve. And if you are not in my Facebook group, Find the Joy with Jen community, come on in. This group is an uplifting, supportive, encouraging environment where you can connect with other faith-filled men and women dealing with divorce just like you are. All right, Joy Seekers, this is what I have for you today. I want to remind you of something very important. The lies that we tell ourselves keep us stuck in patterns of pain and self-doubt. But the moment that we recognize them and replace them with truths, we unlock the door to healing and growth. So I want you to know you will be happy again one day. You are enough and you do not have to do this alone. And if you believe any of these lies, I want to challenge you to take the first step in changing your narrative. I am here to help you break free from those lies and step into the joy and peace that you deserve. Thank you so much for joining me on this path to healing. If you're ready to discover the truth about yourself and become empowered to make the best decisions after your divorce, stick around for the next video. And if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if this video resonates for you. You are stronger than you know, friend, and God has incredible plans for your future. So keep seeking joy and I'll see you next time.